Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So when we start today's journey, we are in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. I'm going to go back and start on the road, popularly known as the hip strip of Montego Bay. It is also called Bottom Road. It was officially called Gloucester Avenue, but it was changed to the Jimmy Cliff Boulevard. It was named in honor of reggae and movie icon Jimmy Cliff. Now, did you know that Jimmy Cliff's correct name is James Chambers? He was born at Somerton in the parish of St. James on April 1, 1948. Jimmy Cliff is now 75 years old. Jimmy Cliff. He's a singer and a songwriter, and history has it that he was instrumental in introducing reggae to an international audience when he starred in the hit movie, The Harder They Come, in 1972. Question, do you know which of Jimmy Cliff's song is his biggest hit to date? You don't? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to sing it, and you type in the title. In the comment section below and no i'm not gonna give up my day job for singing because and let me say it from now before uno say it because uno always i try feast in yourself with me you know no me not give up my day job for singing because if i do that <laughs> if i do that me i go dead for hungry so this song goes like this i can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. <laughs> it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. No. <laughs> May I beg you no. Don't feast it on yourself with me. I never tell no now no, say me a singer. <laughs> All I'm asking of you to do is tell me what's the name of that song. And did you know that that song was Jimmy Cliff's biggest hit? Drop the title in the comment section below. So, after me just murder Jimmy Cliff, good, good song. <laughs> Let me do what I do best <laughs> and give you some factual news. First up, less than two weeks ago, that photo was released. It's the photo of Jermaine Jackson, popularly known as Skelawa. He is 38 years old. He was charged by the police for assault at common law and illegal possession of firearm. He was tried and convicted in the Western Regional Gun Court and he was sentenced to prison on February 6, 2019. Skelawa? He was serving his prison sentence at the Tamarind Farm Prison, but he escaped from that facility on Friday, April 28th. As a result, that photo of him with other information was released. It was also said that Skelawa, he was from the parish of Westmoreland. Well, <laughs> it seemed like Skelawa, he was missing out on something and he escaped from prison to go and get some. You wanna guess what that is? Now, let me warn you about something. Grandma and grandkids watch this channel. So, please may I beg you, be mindful of what you type in the comment <laughs> section. So, it seemed like Skelawa, him got enough of what he was missing out on in prison. So, Monday evening, May 8th, he made arrangement with a justice of the peace for the parish of Westmoreland to carry him in. And, Early yesterday morning, Tuesday, May 9, he met with the GAP who brought him in to the Savannah Lamar police station. So, Skelawa is now back on his way to prison. I hope whatever it was that he went for in Bellyful because <laughs> his stay in prison will now be extended. He won't be released for good behavior. <laughs> ah boy. Now, in this next story, that man on your screen... His name is Brian Blackwood, but he was popularly known as Bigger. He was a 
sales representative and he lived at Mount Concord in the Glengough area in the parish of St. Catherine. We are told that on the night of Saturday, March 11, Bigger was involved in a dispute with at least two men. The very next day, Sunday, March 12, passers-by, they stumbled upon the lifeless body of Bigger in the same area where he lived. Bigger was found in a pool of blood with chap wounds all over his body. We are told that Bigger's head was almost taken off. You got that? So the police were called and they commenced investigations. Based on the police investigations, at least three suspects were identified. One of them is called Pang. Another one is called Q. And the other one, he is known as Ashari. We are told that the police, they carried out operations trying to locate them. But from intelligence received, they had fled the area. Well, yesterday afternoon, Tuesday, May 9, almost two months since Bigger was killed. The St. James Police, acting on intelligence, they carried out a joint police military operation at a four-bedroom house at Goodwill in the parish of St. James. The house was searched and bingo. Ashari, age 37 years old. Q, age 20 years old. And Pang, age 25 years old. They were found hiding in the house and we are also told that a three-year-old girl was also found in the house. All three wanted hoodlums. They were taken into police custody and the three-year-old girl, she was handed over to CDA. So the three of them, they'll be sent back to the parish of St. Catherine to face criminal charges. Intelligencers, big up on yourself, and St. James Police and soldiers, job well done. In this next incident, a man, his name is Mr. Norris Gabidan. He is 54 years old and he was a farmer. He lived at a place named Sayers District in the Stewart Town Police area in the parish of Trelawney. We are told that Norris, he was said to be a hard working farmer but him love him liquor. We are told that on most occasions you would see Norris staggering. Norris was last seen by a family member Sunday night and yes, he was under his waters. Monday all day, Norris was not seen and that was unlike Norris. So early yesterday morning, Tuesday, May 9, a family member went to his home to check on him. On reaching Norris' house, the family member saw the partially decomposed body of Norris lying face down at the right side of the house. The police were called and when they inspected Norris, he had blood coming from his mouth. He appeared to have died from Sunday night. The police, they are awaiting a post-mortem to ascertain what really caused Norris' demise. In the meantime, the investigations are continuing. Sad indeed. In this next incident, this one took place this morning. Wednesday, May 10, about 7 o'clock. It took place along the School Hill Main Road in the Adelphi Police area in the parish of St. James. Listen to this now. A young girl, she is 12 years old and she's a student at the William Nib High School. She's living at Industry in the same Adelphi area. She was on her way to school, so she took a bike taxi to drop her at school. But from all indications, Hoodlums wanted the bike taxi rider. We are told that he's called Zado. We are told that whilst Zado was transporting this young girl, a white motor car drove up. Hoodlums in the car, they opened gunfire, but they didn't hit Zado who they wanted. It was the young girl who was on her way to school who was hit. She received gunshot wounds to her right shoulder. As a result, she fell off the bike. The hoodlums, they continued firing at Zado, but he rode away and made good his escape. The young girl, she was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was treated. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, five 
9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. We are also learning that this morning about 9 o'clock. Two men. One of them, he is known as Romain. Both of them, they were shot and killed at a place named Canaan in the same Adelphi police area. I am not sure if the incidents are connected, but I am doing some digging and will be bringing you the details in a subsequent video. I am told that an AK-47 rifle was used. Stand by for that. The mayhem. In this next incident, we brought you a story on Sunday, April 23. It was about an incident that took place the previous day, Saturday, April 22, about some minutes to 11 o'clock in the morning. A man named Oswell Brown, he was a 47-year-old bike taxi operator of Ebenezer District, Top Road in the Little London area of Westmoreland. Oswell, he was riding his black Jamco motorcycle along Top Road when on reaching in the vicinity of the Little London High School. A white Toyota Axio motor car drove up beside him and intercepted him. The hoodlum who was in the front passenger seat, he jumped out of the car and opened gunfire at Oswell, hitting him in his head and his upper body. We are told that the hoodlum, he attempted to search Oswell, but he was surprised by someone who witnessed what took place. Now, I won't say any more on that for right now. The hoodlum, he then jumped back into the car and he and his crony, they made good their escape. Oswell Brown, he was rushed to the Savannah Lamar Hospital where he was pronounced DEAD. The police, they had reported that shortly after the incident, they carried out a raid at Ebenezer District and the white Toyota Axia motor car that was involved in the incident was seen and seized. The police, they also arrested Bruce Titer, also known as Quenga. He is 32 years old and Quenga, he said to be the leader of the Delvland base Quenga gang. He was picked up. The police are alleging that Quenga, he was the driver for the Axio when the incident took place and he was subsequently charged for the offense of murder. The police, they have now charged someone else and they are claiming that this person, he was the shooter in the incident. He was picked up by the police in an operation. Well, his name is Suwain Lindo, but he's popularly known as Cooley. He is 26 years old and he's living at New Hope in the Little London area of Westmoreland. Cooley, he has since been charged for the offense of murder and he'll be going to the courts shortly. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to be notified. In the final story for today, I carried a story last week, Monday, and I updated it on Tuesday. That robot taxi operator on your screen. His name is Oswald Henry, but he was popularly known as Randy R. Gundag. He is 40 years old, and not because he was called Gundag. We are told that his name did not define him. He lived at a district named Spring Mountain in the Caldwell area of Hanover. The previous night, Sunday, April 30, about some minutes after 8 o'clock, Gundag, he was shot and killed by hoodlums at a spot known as Guango Tree in Green Island in the parish of Hanover. Guango Tree is where taxis plying the Caldwell to Green Island route, normally park and wait on passengers. Well, lightning struck at the same spot last night. That man on your screen and that's the best photo we could get of him. His name is Marlon McIntosh, but he was popularly known as Marvin. Listen to this now. How old did I say Gundag was? Gundag was 40 years old at the time he was killed. Well, Marvin is 40 years old. What kind of work did I tell you 
Gondag was doing. He was a robot taxi operator. Well, Marvin, he was also a robot taxi operator. Where did I say Gondag lived? Gondag lived at Spring Mountain. Marvin also lived at Spring Mountain. Are you following me? <laughs> we are told that last night, Marvin, he received information that two of his regular passengers, they were at the Guango tree and they couldn't get any drive to go home. As a result, Marvin went and picked them up. Marvin, he was in the process of parking the car to see if he could get more passengers when a motorcycle rode up with two hoodlums aboard. The pillion, he pulled a gun and opened gunfire in the car, hitting Marvin in his face and his upper body. A lady, popularly known as Fatty, she said to be in her late 40s and she was seated in the front of the car. She received a gunshot wound to one of her sides, close to her back. A family member of Fatty who was seated in the back of the car. Luckily, she was not harmed. From all indication, Marvin died on the spot. Fatty, she was rushed to a nearby hospital where we are told that she was admitted in a critical condition. We are told that the bullet is still lodged in Fatty. The police were called and when they processed this crime scene, a number of 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So, like I said the other day, as much as I would want to see an end to what is happening in the area, the sad reality is the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, crime it a mash up Jamaica, criminals them a mash up Jamaica. Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Show, show.